Hello, it's John Burford, and this is a short video introduction to the Elliott Wave Theory. At least um, a few of the principles I'll show you um, that, that I use in my own trading. Now, the Elliott Wave Theory is a massive uh, endeavor. Many people spend a lifetime studying it, and it's by far the most complex method that I use. But uh, before you run away, I'll tell you that um, I only use a few of the very basic concepts, which I think m many traders could well uh, could well get um, grasp and use for the, for your own trading. Okay, now I've been studying it for several years, and and I still regard myself as an amateur. Um, and many traders don't touch it at all. It's just a bit too complex, and it seems a bit arbitrary. But I hope to show you um, that that there are ways of of using this theory to your advantage. Now I'll just say that um, a couple of the um, of the principles and a few guidelines I use have uh, given me some very useful forecasting. Uh, ability and it's just one more tool to add to my toolbox and by the way it was uh, one of the tools I used to identify the recent nineteen twelve dollar high in gold for example so it's well worth trying to get uh, uh, get a grip on on a few of these very basic concepts okay um, well it, it was Ralph Elliott in the 1930s that made the uh, very basic discovery um, of the two principles which I use. Uh, principle number one, uh, and I'll refer to a bull market, and of course everything is reversed in a bear market. Okay, principle number one, from a low to a high, the total move occurs in five waves. Three up and two down. And the two down ones are called corrective waves. Now after the fifth wave, the trend reverses. This is a very crucial point. And the principle number two I use is concerning the corrective waves. Now they most commonly take the form of a three-wave pattern or ABC as I call it. Now wave C uh, is is at least as low as wave A when we're talking about a bull market uh, remember. So um, I will show you a few of these on this very long-term Dow chart here. Now by the way uh, these principles apply in any time frame from the one minute to the to the monthly so um, um, it, it's a universal concept so let's start off with this um, the low here back in uh, in March of uh, 09 this 6400 area low of the Dow that was the um, the big plunge low now from that point we embarked on some rallies of course and this is the form uh, of the rally it looks pretty arbitrary but when you when you study, let's say this this part here, let's take this part there to start with, you can see, I think, that we we have some waves, some larger waves. The larger waves are these here, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. In between, there are minor waves. Now, if we, if we go up here, we can call this wave one. This is a correction in wave two. A big rally in wave three. A correction in wave four and a new high in a wave five. So there we have the illustration of, of, the, of the first principle um, of, of edit waves that I use. And I'll show you a little bit later in this video how I actually use them to my advantage in trading. Now, the interesting point is uh, these waves here from uh, these corrective waves, waves, uh, this is the wave two down here, let me just um, uh, see if I can give you a bit better detail. Let's move that up a bit. Okay. So from this low here, we made wave one. And wave two, if you notice, occurs in three waves. A, B, and C. Wave C lies under wave A. So that, that obeys uh, the, 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 uh, the rule that I've just mentioned. This wave three here goes up to here, and wave four is in three waves, A, B, C. Wave C lies below wave A. So right away, in this example here, we have all of the guidelines, all of the rules being obeyed for Elliott wave theory. And you see, after wave five, we had a big plunge, which culminated in the flash crash, if you remember, uh, last May. 
so that was a big correction. <laughs> it happened in one day. Um, but, but looking at this huge wave structure here, overall, um, we've got all of, the, um, all of the guidelines and the rules being obeyed for Elliott waves. Now, in retrospect, of course, uh, we can all um, find the waves and uh, we can be geniuses at it, of course. Uh, but in real real time trading, um, it, it is it's it is always a lot more difficult, of course. And uh, the wave count, as, as I like to call it, can seem quite arbitrary. Now you've seen, if you've been reading my emails, um, that um, that my provisional Elliott wave counts have been wrong some some of the time, and so I've had to uh, reassess. That is very common. In, in using Elliott Wave Theory. But of course, uh, I don't use Elliott Wave Theory alone. I use it in conjunction with the other, uh, the other methods that I'm going through in these videos. Okay, there's uh, a few guidelines, as I mentioned, and I'll mention them now, that um, um, a third wave is very often the longest and the strongest in the sequence. So here's the third wave here. You, as you can see, visually, you can see right away, it is the longest wave in the, in the pattern, and it's, it is the strongest. It's the most uh, relentless, I call it. It's a relentless move up with these minor um, corrections here. But by and large, anyone buying, anyone long, wouldn't need to worry too, too much about, uh, about their positions. The other guideline is that fifth waves, and of course this is, this is the fifth wave in this particular se sequence, um, is an ending wave. Now, <laughs> uh, since I'm a bit of a contrarian trader, I'm always looking for reversals of trends. So I'm looking for fifth waves because I know at the end of a fifth wave that uh, the trend will change and will train, uh, change quite suddenly very often. And now, now the problem is, of course, in real-time trading. If we're trading ab around here, we we are challenging this high here of this um, uh, of this uh, wave three. Now, any of these points here could potentially be the end of wave five. Um, and and that's the difficulty. Picking tops is notoriously difficult, uh, but not impossible. Okay, now what I'd like you to do, if if uh, if you're interested in pursuing this, is to go over your your charts in any time frame whatsoever, from the one minute to the monthly, and see if you can spot uh, the five directional waves and the two corrective waves. I think you're going to be surprised at how often these patterns show up. Now, okay, that's theory. How do I actually apply it in practice? Right, now. If you're trading down here in real time, you have no idea you're in a wave one, of course. But uh, by the time you get to here and you see a, a big correction and a little rally and, a, and a, low, a new low being made, which is underneath that low, I think you've got an idea that you're in an ABC correction. Uh, with that, uh, that knowledge, you can actually start looking to go long anywhere anywhere in this zone here. And a corroborating evidence, of course, if you look down to the momentum, I always follow momentum on my charts, is that uh, wave A, which is wave, this is wave A here, the momentum was at this level, and wave C, the momentum was slightly higher at that level. So there you have what I call a positive momentum divergence. And I go over that in another video. But that's a corroborating piece of evidence to suggest that the wave C is ending here and to get ready for a, a resumption of the rally. So that, that's one way I use um, the Elliott Wave Theory. I'm looking for C waves in a corrective wave sequence to go with the, tr the trend, the original trend. The other uh, key trading point is fifth waves. I'm looking for ending waves here and um, looking for reversal. So I like to go short when, when I feel and the evidence stacks up that I have um, uh, the fifth wave identified. 
Okay, now, uh, I think that'll be it for this introduction video. I hope you got some uh, good ideas for your trading here, and I'll meet you in the next video.